Hello for the 15 week in ordinary time. See, I'm not dressed up like a priest and I'm not going to give an ordinary homily. And I have a Pox Christi, a Pox Christi shirt on, this beautiful orange t-shirt. It's, we have them when we have um, the picnics and the annual picnic. But anywho, it's all on the 22 years earlier. And today, July the 10th, uh, Pax Christi, the people, we the people, are celebrating 22 years after the first Mass at Pax Christi. And I went back to my original first pictorial directory, and I looked up some um, pictures and stuff. Okay, there first there's that dove that I stole it from somewhere, but anyway, it wound up on the, after the first year of our existence, and I'm just going to go through that and say a few things about that. I'll hold up the book, what I'm talking about, but you probably won't be able to see it. The first talks about, as far as the first mass or our parish, and in the pictorial directory, uh, I wrote a letter, and just the first few words of that letter says this, a new parish, a vibrant faith community today, a model for tomorrow's church. And then the first words of my letter are, 273 families are actively involved in making Pox Christi a vibrant faith community since our decree of establishment, March the 7th, 1994. First Mass, July 10th, 1994. <coughs> So that's where it all began. But it didn't begin in this beautiful place that we have now. It began in a bingo hall. I knew a friend who knew a friend, and I went to this friend and asked him if I could rent or borrow his bingo hall on Sunday. And he said yes. And he gave it to us for a year or two at free. And so every Sunday morning, the people of the parish had to take down all the bingo tables and rearrange all the chairs. And then we set up an altar in the front of this, which we really did. Another friend made a sleeve that went right over the electronic bingo table up on a platform with perfect acoustics, what they call bingo, and right above it there was an electronic board for the bingo numbers, 1 to 75, I think it was. And so that's where we started. In the bingo hall every Sunday, taking down, setting up, and retaking down and resetting up for the bingo that Sunday afternoon at one. A glorious time was had by all, except those who were, who were allergic to smoke, cigarette smoke. Some people just couldn't come because it was too bad. Too bad for us. At any rate, we had that July 10, 1994, 22 years ago today. And in that, uh, in the front page and so forth, there's a picture of me holding here, like I do things backwards, holding here nine, nine Catholic encyclopedia. And it was a Sunday, and it was a Sunday when Moses was praying for the Jewish people, the Israelites, in battle. And he would hold up his hands, and they would be winning. And then he would get tired, and he would drop his hands, and they would start to lose. And then he would hold them back up again, and then they would start winning again. And, and he got tired, and Aaron and, and you know helped him, the two helped him to hold up his hands. So I went and gave my homily and said, I'm going to hold these nine Catholic encyclopedias do I get tired and that is when the homily is going to be over and it didn't take too long for me to get tired that's what I thought at least and the second one is right in, beside the altar there was a motorcycle well the bingo people were a rough, raffling off a motorcycle for months and months selling these chances so right to the face of the altar to the right it was parked a motorcycle Hmm. It's glad when that left. And then, uh, sort of interesting, this corner, but you can't see it, 
right at the top, that black piece at the top is the electronic numbers. So when you would take a ping pong ball with a number on it, one, you would stick it in slot one, and it would light up this number on the B1. Or you would take another one, N40. Well, there were 75 numbers, so our electronic hymn board, we could use up to 75 numbers with a ping pong ball underneath the altar. Now, that was quite clever. We didn't do it that often. It was too much trouble. We could announce it over the perfect system. Well, then, as far as the first town hall meeting, well, that was in July the 18th, one week after we had the first mass. We probably had, there's a picture in here, we probably had 80 people at that town hall meeting. So I was up there standing behind the altar, or maybe the altar was gone. I was there at the bingo hall. And some lady rose her hand and says, Father, I have a suggestion. I have a suggestion that we do not build a church. My suggestion is that we build a Catholic grade school first. Oh. I said, I think that's a wonderful suggestion. I would recommend that you go and make an appointment with the bishop and tell him exactly that. And then we'll go accordingly. But the bishop, Bishop Williams, sent me here to first of all build a church. Hmm. I never saw that lady again at Pox Christi. First town hall meeting. And then the first Wednesday evening mass. A friend of mine from McDonald's, the offices for McDonald's were in uh, Nicholasville. And every Wednesday night, he would let us use the office to have a Wednesday evening mass. And we did that for a year or two. First Wednesday night mass. Well, the rectory, when I left Christ the King, uh, I didn't have any place to live. And so I was thinking of renting a place, one of these townhouses or whatever. But then somebody uh, said, um, Father, we have a place over at Marriott, off of Newtown Pike. It's on the 13th hole. And we're going on a world tour for three months and visit relatives because Ward retired. He was the head surgeon in the medical center. And would you like to uh, live there for three months while we're gone? Well, let me think. Okay. And I did. It was wonderful. And it was free. The parish didn't pay a nickel because of their generosity. The first rectory. Well, the second rectory, they came home, so I had to get out of there. And so some kind soul, another friend who had a house on Tate's Creek Road, and they were moving to Florida and keeping this house, wanted to know if I would house sit for up to a year. I said, well, let me think about that. Oh, okay. And so I did for almost a year. Had a swimming pool in the backyard, never filled, and had a sauna in the the basement used quite often, but it was a great big house on uh, Tate's Creek. And then, lo and behold, they were coming back. And another friend, well, the first friend, Dr. Ward and Pudge Griffin, had the medic uh, the uh, in the medical center in surgery. He wanted to know if. I would be interested in accepting a house from them so that I could sell when we began to build for Pox Christi. And that is the house, the old house, 100 year old house on Viley Road. I really wasn't real quick on this one because there were roaches and it was a mess and uh, divorced father with three kids lived in this and it was a wreck and I thought oh I got friends over Pox Christi I got friends from past over Christ King 
they'll help me clean it up. And by golly, they really helped clean it up. And I said, yes. And I fell in love with that house. So when we get and it came time to build and to the money, we sold it. Fox Christie sold it. Or the diocese sold it to Father Heman. Two appraisals, bought it from the diocese. $160,000. Greatest investment I ever made. A great investment and a bonanza for Fox Christie's building fund. First Holy Communion. There's a picture somewhere. Um, the First Holy Communion kids came out to the farm in saying thanks for our, our First Holy Communion. And they gave me a two foot dogwood tree, tree, white. It's still there. It's gorgeous. Today it's over 20 feet tall. First Holy Communion class. First Holy Communion, First Baptism, First Wedding. All of these are pictures in this in this book, which I'm gonna have outside, you know, in the in the area out there on a table, which you can see. Well, what's the point? And you can keep on going through all these things. Um, and oh, well, here's Christmas at Fox Christie. Here's a good one. All these little kids, these angels and stuff. We had a birthday cake for Jesus. And you can see some angels around there. And you know, sometimes I open my mouth and say something and and then think. Well, there was one little fat angel there. And for some reason, I just started to smile to myself. And I started to speak without thinking. And I said something like that, that little chubby angel, I, I don't know if she'll be able to fly. She's so heavy, I don't think she'll get off the ground. I don't know if I ever saw that mother before, or again. any rate, it just keeps going on and on, and there are so many different things and so many pictures that bring back memories far more. Oh, here's a... We had dinners once, and we had a St. Patrick's Day dinner. And here is a handsome young man in a tux on St. Patrick's Day. That's on the table, too. All of those things are really cherished memories and happy times. And I chose a reading, a special reading today from Ephesians, and i like to read it and tell you why I chose it. It's a reading from 2 Ephesians, just verses 20, uh, 19 to 22. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him the whole structure is held together, and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Where the gist or the point is, the church, the parish, begun 22 years ago, is not a bingo hall that is not a hardware store and it is not this modern beautiful edifice that we have today and so brightly lit it's you the people of god it's you the community it's you coupled together in jesus christ praying together offering sacrifice together celebrating the sacraments together having parties together christians catholics together it's you the people of god i can still see that vibrancy there that we had the first few weeks of Pox Christi 
perish. Oh, I forgot one thing. I have been accused of naming this place Pox Christi, but I continually deny it. We held a insight on all 44 names and then 22 you know, and then 12 and then 6 and so forth and down to 3 or 4 and we voted on them and some people say I cheated I forced it I, I well I'm not saying anything but I continue to think as we just experienced these murders in Orlando and in Dallas what we in the United States need more than ever is peace with one another is peace with Christ and only brought about through the power of God and through the message of Jesus Christ who is God. I am so proud of the past history of Pax Christi and the present people and the pastors who took on when I left that Pax Christi is that vibrant community is that community of people with faith in Jesus Christ. Have a good day.